In a world dominated by hidden intentions, intricate relationships, and the yearning for control, the concept of dark seduction stands as both enticing and intimidating. It offers individuals the keys to understanding and influencing others on a deep, often unseen level. This book explores dark seduction in its multifaceted forms, an art of guiding and shaping desires to attain influence and power, whether for connection, personal gain, or control. However, behind this power lies a formidable responsibility. The techniques discussed here are to be wielded thoughtfully with a clear understanding of their ethical implications. At its core, dark seduction isn't merely a set of tricks. It's a profound understanding of human psychology, motivations, and the subconscious forces that drive individuals' choices and emotions. It's about subtly guiding the desires and attachments of others, creating deep, often irresistible bonds while appearing innocuous, even invisible. For those drawn to this path, mastering the techniques within these pages requires intuition, empathy, and often a cold detachment from conventional emotional expectations. The journey of the puppet master is complex. There is no roadmap for this realm, only methods, insights, and techniques that have been carefully refined, tested, and re-examined. Unlike typical seduction tactics, dark seduction involves shaping emotions from the shadows, understanding needs before they're articulated, and fostering a sense of dependency that feels like freedom to those ensnared. In a world where manipulation often wears a face of kindness, the puppet master learns to cultivate empathy not to comfort, but to connect in a way that allows them control. One of the first lessons in dark seduction is understanding the psychology of desire. Why do we crave what we crave? Why does a glance from a stranger or a soft-spoken word have the power to dominate our thoughts? Delving into these questions unveils the triggers, both physical and psychological, that make humans susceptible to influence. The next step is building a toolkit, a personal repertoire of strategies that can control, allure, and bend others' wills subtly and effectively. Like any tool, these techniques must be used responsibly, for while they can lead to deep connections, they can also breed dependency, disillusionment, and pain. The puppet master's path is not one of complete detachment. Rather, it requires an exceptional level of emotional awareness, of observing others closely, recognizing their insecurities, and playing to their needs and wants. From building trust and rapport to evoking jealousy and tension, the puppet master learns to walk a fine line, using each emotion as an instrument of control. In later chapters, this book also explores the ethics of these methods, stressing the importance of boundaries and the recognition of the thin line between influence and coercion. The art of dark seduction, as presented in this book, does not aim to harm, but to empower the reader with knowledge, an awareness of emotional dynamics, a toolkit for influence, and a mirror for self-reflection. Power is intoxicating, but the puppet master knows that it is fleeting if used carelessly. The ultimate goal of dark seduction is not just control over others, but mastery over oneself. To wield influence responsibly and to cultivate relationships where mutual growth and understanding can exist, even within a framework of hidden intention. Welcome back to Audiobook Vision. Today, we're diving into the Puppet Master audiobook, written by Neil Brighton, and published by Audiobook Vision. Before we begin, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's get started. Chapter 1. Dark Seduction To speak of dark seduction is to step into a world where the subtle forces that govern human interaction lie hidden from plain sight. Here, beneath the surface of casual conversation, flirtation, or even friendship, lies a powerful, magnetic force. The desire for control for influence, for the ability to shape and direct others' emotions and actions. This isn't just about romance or charm. It's a profound mastery over the psychology of attraction and connection, tapping into the raw, unfiltered nature of human desires. Dark seduction is often misunderstood, 
conjuring images of manipulation or coercion. But to truly understand its essence, one must look past these shallow interpretations and view it as a delicate art, wielded by those who possess both emotional intelligence and insight into the deepest recesses of the human psyche. Those who master dark seduction aren't necessarily born manipulators. They are observers, empathetic listeners, and skilled communicators who can understand needs long before they are even articulated. They don't force connections. They invite them, nurturing a sense of closeness, trust, and desire through subtle, carefully orchestrated interactions. So, what is dark seduction really? At its core, it is the mastery of guiding and shaping desires, an almost imperceptible influence that taps into the other person's vulnerabilities, needs, and cravings. This influence often operates in the shadows, sometimes as subtle as a lingering glance, a whispered word, a slight mirroring of body language. Each move, each word, is intentional, designed to evoke specific emotions in the other person, to gently guide them toward attachment, dependency, and, ultimately, a sense of emotional surrender. The allure of control. Humans are driven by a need for security, love, and validation, but there is another, often unacknowledged force, control. We crave a sense of influence, a feeling that we can shape our environment and the people around us to meet our needs. For those who learn the techniques of dark seduction, this allure of control becomes more than a fleeting wish. It becomes a reality. There is a power in knowing you can subtly guide someone's thoughts, create connections where none existed, and evoke emotions that linger long after you've left the room. But with this power comes responsibility. Dark seduction is a double-edged sword, capable of both deep connection and profound harm. Those who embark on this journey must be willing to confront the ethical implications of their actions. Influence is not inherently harmful, but when wielded carelessly, it can create dependency, insecurity, and even pain. The art of dark seduction demands not only skill, but wisdom, a willingness to respect the autonomy of others even as you guide them. The importance of self-mastery. One of the first lessons on the path of dark seduction is the necessity of self-mastery. Before one can influence others, one must be able to control their own emotions, impulses, and desires. This isn't about repressing feelings, but understanding them on a deeper level. Knowing what drives you, what makes you vulnerable, and what might betray your own intentions. The successful puppet master does not let their own emotions dictate their actions. They are aware of their own motives, constantly examining their intentions and the potential consequences of their choices. This process of self-reflection is crucial, for dark seduction is not just about the other person. It is also a journey into one's own psyche. Every interaction, every connection, mirrors aspects of our inner selves, revealing our own desires and insecurities. The puppet master learns to navigate this inner landscape, understanding that true mastery comes not from suppressing emotions, but from integrating them, using their own vulnerabilities as a source of empathy and insight rather than weakness, setting the stage for influence. As we delve deeper into the art of dark seduction, this book will provide you with a range of techniques, psychological insights, and real-life applications. From understanding the mechanics of desire to building trust, from subtle manipulation to establishing long-term influence, each chapter will equip you with tools that can be used to shape emotions and influence others in a meaningful way. But remember, influence is not the same as control. True mastery lies in guiding, not forcing, in inviting, not compelling. Each individual who embarks on this journey will need to find their own balance, a personal code of ethics that aligns with their intentions. Some may use these techniques to enhance their personal relationships, creating deeper, more authentic connections. Others may employ them in professional settings, using the power of influence to inspire, motivate, or lead. Whatever your purpose, let this book serve as a guide, 
a reminder that with influence comes responsibility, and with power comes the need for self-awareness and integrity. Dark seduction is not about quick fixes or superficial tricks. It is a long, introspective journey into the essence of human connection and influence. It asks us to look at our own motives and to understand the impact we have on others. It is about learning to wield influence wisely, to respect the delicate balance between guiding desires and respecting boundaries, and to cultivate a deep sense of empathy. Even as we learn to shape the emotions and attachments of others that I end the following chapters, we will explore the intricate dynamics of desire, attachment, and trust, each revealing another layer of this powerful and complex art. As you read, keep in mind the dual nature of dark seduction. It is a tool, one that can either create profound, life-altering connections or breed dependency and disillusionment. How you choose to wield it will ultimately define the kind of puppet master you become. Chapter 2. Understanding Human Desire In the shadowed world of influence and persuasion, one must begin by understanding the essence of human desire. Desire is more than a simple want. It's a deeply ingrained force, rooted in our minds and bodies, that guides our choices, shapes our connections, and influences every heartbeat, every yearning glance. To master dark seduction is to understand this force, to unravel what makes people crave, attach, and fall under the spell of longing. Human desires are as varied as the individuals who experience them. Yet beneath this diversity lies a common thread and need to feel connected, understood, and most of all, fulfilled. Desire is at once powerful and delicate. When unfulfilled, it festers, creating a need for something or someone to fill the void. As a puppet master, your role is to understand these desires, to recognize what drives others, and to shape those hidden wants into something more potent, more dependent, even irresistible. The nature of human desire. What fuels our desires? Is it a longing for validation, an escape from loneliness, a need for purpose, or simply the thrill of the chase? For some, desire is rooted in security. For others, it stems from excitement or risk. To become adept at dark seduction, you must go beyond the surface and delve into the underlying motivations that shape each person's desires. This requires empathy and intuition, as well as an ability to listen, not just to words, but to silences, to expressions, to the subtle shifts in body language that reveal inner longing. Desire is paradoxical. It is both universal and unique. Everyone experiences it, yet it manifests in vastly different ways. Some people crave affection, while others seek approval. Some are driven by a need for control, while others find satisfaction and surrender. As a puppet master, you will learn to recognize these differences, to see beyond what people say they want and into the true nature of their needs. This understanding is the first step in creating a connection that feels organic, even inevitable, to the other person. Emotional triggers, the key to attachment. Desire often begins with an emotional trigger, a small, often unnoticed moment that sparks a feeling of connection or attraction. It might be a laugh shared over a common joke, a moment of eye contact that lingers just a beat too long, or a soft, reassuring word during a moment of vulnerability. These triggers are the building blocks of attachment, each one subtly weaving a thread that binds one person to another. Emotional triggers operate beneath the surface, guiding us without our conscious awareness. They are the smiles that make us feel understood, the moments of silence that make us feel seen. To wield influence through dark seduction, you must become an expert in recognizing and creating these triggers. You must learn to evoke a response, to craft moments that linger in memory, and to ignite the kind of desire that latches onto the heart and mind. Each person has different triggers, shaped by their past experiences, insecurities, and dreams. Some might respond to words of validation, while others are more attuned to gestures of protection or intimacy. By observing, 
By paying attention to the small details that others overlook, you begin to uncover these hidden triggers. And once you find them, you have the power to create a sense of attachment that feels as though it was always meant to be. The role of need fulfillment. Desire is sustained by need, and every individual carries a complex array of needs, some obvious, others hidden deep within. Fulfillment of these needs creates a sense of satisfaction, a feeling of relief that binds the person to you. As a puppet master, your goal is to recognize these needs, to understand what the other person truly seeks, and to position yourself as the solution to their inner cravings. The needs that drive us are often more profound than we realize. Some are rooted in childhood insecurities, while others stem from a lifelong search for validation or acceptance. When these needs go unmet, they create a void, an emptiness that longs to be filled. By identifying this emptiness, you can subtly guide the other person toward you, fulfilling their needs in a way that feels both natural and deeply satisfying. But this fulfillment must be balanced. Give too much, and the desire fades. Withhold too much, and they may turn away. The art lies in maintaining a careful balance between meeting their needs and keeping them wanting more. This is the delicate dance of dark seduction, an interplay between satisfaction and longing, between fulfillment and yearning. The puppet master's role in shaping desire. As a puppet master, you are both a guide and an architect shaping the desires of others in a way that feels organic to them. This requires a high level of self-awareness, an understanding of your own motives, and a clear boundary between influence and control. The goal is not to force others to feel something against their will, but to align yourself with their existing desires, to amplify those desires until they become all-consuming. Shaping desire is a slow, intentional process. It's about creating a connection that feels inevitable, a bond that seems unbreakable. This is achieved through consistency, through small gestures that create a sense of security, and through moments of intensity that deepen attachment. Each interaction, each shared moment, adds a new layer to the bond, a new dimension to the desire. Over time, the other person begins to see you not just as someone they desire, but as someone they need. But there is a danger in this power, a responsibility that must not be overlooked. The more deeply you fulfill another's needs, the more they depend on you, the more vulnerable they become. This vulnerability is a gift, one that must be treated with respect and care. For while it grants you influence, it also places you in a position of trust, a position that demands ethical consideration creating meaningful, lasting desire. Dark seduction is not about creating fleeting attraction. It's about cultivating a connection that endures, that stays even in moments of absence. To do this, you must understand that desire is not a fixed state, but a fluid, evolving force. It requires nurturing, a continual weaving of new moments, new memories, new reasons to stay attached. The art of sustaining desire lies in the ability to create a sense of unpredictability, a balance between security and excitement. The other person should feel safe with you, yet also slightly uncertain, always drawn to the mystery that surrounds you. This balance keeps them engaged, keeps them yearning, even as they feel fulfilled. In the chapters that follow, we will delve deeper into the techniques that allow you to harness this power of desire. How to read body language, create emotional dependency, and use nonverbal cues to enhance attraction. But remember, the most powerful tool you have is understanding. To know desire is to wield influence. To understand it deeply is to become a true puppet master. Chapter 3. The Essentials of Influence and Control in the delicate world of influence, where subtlety speaks louder than force, the puppet master must learn to blend intuition with strategy. Influence isn't about manipulation. It's about understanding, guiding, 
and ultimately allowing the other person to feel as though they are making choices freely, even as they move toward the path you've shaped. This chapter dives into the essential tools of influence, techniques that are not merely tricks, but keys to unlocking the desires, fears, and insecurities that lie hidden in every human heart. When we talk about control, it isn't about overpowering someone's will. True influence operates in the shadows, so seamless that the other person feels not only comfortable, but compelled by their own emotions to draw closer. The essence of influence lies in fostering a sense of mutual trust, creating a bond that feels authentic, even as it's intentionally guided. Here, the puppet master's tools are observation, intuition, and the kind of patience that understands control is a process, not a destination. The art of observation, seeing beyond the surface. One of the most profound skills in mastering influence is observation. To guide others effectively, you must be able to read the language they speak without words, their body language, their micro-expressions, the pauses in their sentences, and even the ways they try to hide their vulnerabilities. Observation is more than noticing. It's about truly seeing, interpreting, and understanding the cues that lie beneath the surface. Each glance, each sigh, each slight movement reveals something. Pay attention to the way they hold themselves when they speak of certain topics, the shift in tone when they talk about their fears or ambitions. Observation is like decoding a silent script. Each line etched in the expressions they wear, the tone of voice they use, and the way they react in moments of vulnerability. The more you observe, the more you understand them, not only as they present themselves, but as they truly are beneath the mask. This deep level of observation allows you to see them in a way that even they may not fully understand, giving you the ability to tailor your influence to fit their unique needs. By observing, you uncover their emotional triggers and develop a sixth sense for what words to say, what gestures to make, and when to push forward or pull back. Observation allows you to become an emotional mirror, reflecting back the parts of themselves they wish to see in you creating an almost irresistible allure. The role of intuition, guiding through feeling. While observation grounds you in the tangible, intuition guides you through the intangible. Intuition is that subtle whisper within, the inner knowing that allows you to feel what others feel, to sense what words will resonate, and to understand what actions will create a deeper connection. Where observation helps you see patterns, Intuition helps you sense the subtleties between them, capturing what's left unsaid and unexplained. Intuition is cultivated through empathy and practice. When you tune into another person's emotional state, you begin to sense the currents of their thoughts, even when they themselves cannot fully articulate them. This feeling-based guidance allows you to step into their world, feeling their desires, their fears, their insecurities, as if they were your own. Intuition is not about guessing. It's about connecting on a level that feels almost spiritual. It allows you to be present with the other person, creating a sense of attunement that builds trust effortlessly. This trust is the cornerstone of influence, for when someone feels deeply understood, they become open, vulnerable, and ready to follow the path you lay before them. Building a Repertoire of Psychological Tactics to wield influence skillfully, a puppet master must master a collection of psychological techniques, subtle, yet potent tools that gently guide the thoughts and feelings of others. These tactics are not about deception, but about creating a sense of connection that feels so natural, so seamless, that the other person barely realizes they are being led. 1. Mirroring One of the most powerful techniques is mirroring. The act of subtly copying the other person's body language, tone, and expressions. Mirroring builds rapport by signaling similarity, a powerful, instinctive trigger that fosters trust. When done subtly, it creates an unspoken connection, a feeling of we are alike, which makes them feel understood and safe in your presence. 2. Priming 
Priming is the art of influencing someone's subconscious by planting ideas or emotions that guide their behavior. A gentle compliment, a well-timed word, or even a look can prime someone to feel specific emotions without realizing it. For instance, using words that evoke warmth or security can subconsciously encourage the other person to feel comforted and attached to you. 3. The power of pause. Silence, used effectively, can be as powerful as words. A well-timed pause can create anticipation, drawing the other person's attention and amplifying the importance of what comes next. Pausing also gives the other person space to speak, revealing more about their thoughts and emotions, allowing you to better understand and guide them. 4. Subtle flattery. Compliments, when authentic and subtle, can deepen the bond, making the other person feel valued. Unlike obvious flattery, which often seems forced or insincere, subtle praise feels genuine, igniting their need for validation in a way that binds them closer to you. 5. Creating scarcity. Human psychology is wired to value what is scarce. By making your attention or time feel limited, you create a sense of urgency, making them feel privileged to be in your presence. This tactic must be used carefully, balancing availability with distance to keep their desire alive without causing frustration. Each of these techniques serves as a brushstroke in the painting of influence, creating a dynamic where they feel compelled to trust, listen, and engage. These tactics, when combined with observation and intuition, allow you to shape interactions with subtle precision, leading the other person to experience the relationship as something magnetic, something they cannot resist. The balance between influence and control. As you delve deeper into the art of influence, remember that there is a delicate line between guiding and controlling. Influence is about offering gentle direction, leaving enough space for the other person to feel free in their choices, even as those choices align with your intent. Control, on the other hand, can strip away autonomy, creating dependency instead of connection. True influence respects boundaries and autonomy. The puppet master does not seek to dominate. They seek to inspire. Influence is most effective when it is rooted in respect, creating a sense of partnership rather than ownership. When you influence another person with respect for their boundaries, you create a relationship that feels safe one where trust and attachment grow naturally. Fostering an emotional connection. All of these techniques are ultimately tools for fostering connection. True influence doesn't just manipulate. It connects, creating a shared emotional experience that feels meaningful to the other person. To become a master of influence is to cultivate empathy, to feel deeply and express authentically so that the other person feels seen, valued, and understood. When someone feels truly connected to you, influence is no longer a matter of tactics. It becomes a bond, a mutual understanding that feels more like a partnership than manipulation. They are drawn to you not only because you understand their needs, but because they feel understood, a sensation so rare and precious that it creates a lasting connection. As you continue on this journey, Keep in mind that influence is a dance. It's a balance of push and pull, a harmony of speaking and listening, of guiding and releasing. The puppet master knows that the goal isn't merely to control, but to create a bond so strong, so unbreakable, that it feels as natural as breathing that I end the next chapter. We'll explore how to build rapport and trust, essential foundations for any form of influence. Here, You'll learn techniques that deepen connection, allowing you to become an indispensable presence in the lives of others, creating a relationship rooted in both respect and irresistible attraction. Chapter 4. Establishing Rapport and Trust At the heart of every meaningful connection lies rapport, the silent, unspoken bond that makes two people feel comfortable, connected, and understood. For the puppet master, Rapport is not just a tool. It is the foundation upon which influence is built. Without rapport, attempts at guiding or influencing someone can feel hollow. 
even intrusive. But when trust is present, influence flows naturally, like water finding its way down a mountain, carving out paths without force or resistance. Building rapport is an art form. It's a delicate, almost sacred process that requires patience, presence, and above all, genuine care. When rapport is authentic, it creates an atmosphere where the other person feels seen and valued, laying the groundwork for influence that doesn't feel manipulative, but instead like a connection they yearn to preserve. The power of vulnerability. One of the most profound ways to establish rapport is through vulnerability. Many people walk through life with emotional armor, shielding their insecurities, fears, and dreams from others. They crave connection, yet are often too guarded to allow it. When you reveal your own vulnerabilities, small, honest pieces of yourself, it signals to the other person that they, too, can let down their guard. Vulnerability invites vulnerability, creating a bridge between hearts. Sharing vulnerabilities doesn't mean revealing deep, personal secrets all at once. Rather, it's about showing glimpses of your humanity, a past failure, a cherished hope, or even a lingering doubt. This openness creates a sense of relatability, reassuring them that you too are human with fears and dreams that echo their own. Through vulnerability, you become less of a mystery and more of a companion, someone with whom they feel safe to be their truest self. This kind of connection goes beyond surface-level interactions. It creates a shared emotional landscape, a place where both of you can navigate the nuances of trust and rapport. The more you reveal, the more they feel encouraged to share, deepening the relationship until trust blossoms like a flower in the warmth of spring. Listening as an act of connection. In a world where so many are eager to be heard, Simply listening can be a radical act of kindness. Listening, truly listening, requires you to be fully present, undistracted by your own thoughts or agendas. When someone speaks, allow their words to wash over you, resisting the urge to judge, advise, or redirect. Instead, focus on understanding the emotions behind their words, the feelings that give their voice depth. Listening with empathy is not just about hearing their words, but about tuning into their emotional state, recognizing the undercurrents of joy, fear, or sadness that ripple beneath the surface. When someone feels truly listened to, they feel valued, and when they feel valued, trust takes root. Often, people are drawn to those who make them feel understood. As a puppet master, your influence grows not from grand gestures or clever words, but from the quiet act of listening deeply and empathetically. Listening creates an emotional mirror, reflecting their innermost thoughts and desires, making them feel more connected to you than to anyone else. Mirroring and matching, creating subconscious harmony. Mirroring and matching are subtle yet powerful ways to build rapport on a subconscious level. By gently mirroring the other person's body language, tone of voice, or expressions, you create a feeling of alignment. This subconscious harmony taps into our instinctive attraction to people who seem familiar or similar, encouraging them to feel a sense of comfort and closeness with you. This technique must be used with sensitivity. If done overtly, it can feel forced or insincere. But when approached naturally, mirroring becomes a silent language of connection. If they lean forward, you might lean forward slightly, signaling shared interest. If they speak softly, you could lower your own voice, creating an atmosphere of intimacy. These subtle cues signal to their subconscious that you're on the same wavelength, building rapport without a single word. Mirroring can be especially effective in moments of shared emotion. If they are excited, matching their enthusiasm shows solidarity, reinforcing the connection. In moments of vulnerability, matching their calmness or empathy allows them to feel truly seen. It's as if you are dancing to the same rhythm, each movement mirroring the other, creating a beautiful synchronicity that deepens rapport. 
Building trust through consistency and integrity. Trust isn't built overnight. It is earned through consistent actions that reflect integrity, empathy, and honesty. To be trusted, you must first be reliable, showing up for the other person in ways that prove your intentions are genuine. Trust grows when your words align with your actions, when promises are kept, and when the other person feels secure in the knowledge that you respect their well-being. Small, consistent gestures, remembering their preferences, honoring their boundaries, being reliable in your communication, build a reputation of trustworthiness. People are drawn to those they can count on, especially in a world where trust is often fragile. As you demonstrate consistency and integrity, trust deepens, creating a bond that feels enduring and unbreakable. Integrity is also about respecting boundaries, understanding that influence doesn't mean intrusion. Respect their personal space, both physically and emotionally, giving them room to feel independent, even as they draw closer to you. This respect reinforces their trust, making them feel safe to open up further knowing that their vulnerabilities won't be exploited. Creating a safe emotional space to build rapport and trust. It's essential to create an emotional sanctuary, a space where they feel safe to express their true selves without fear of judgment. This space allows them to bring forth their insecurities, their dreams, and their fears, knowing that they will be met with empathy and understanding. Creating this emotional space is like building a cocoon, a protective layer that surrounds both of you, separating your connection from the harshness of the outside world. When someone feels they can be fully themselves with you, the bond becomes almost sacred, an oasis of honesty and acceptance. Here, they feel valued not just for who they are, but for the vulnerabilities and strengths they bring to the relationship. Balancing intimacy and autonomy. While establishing rapport is about creating closeness, it's equally important to honor the other person's autonomy. Balance is key. If the relationship feels too overwhelming, it can stifle their sense of independence, causing them to pull away. Give them space to make choices, to assert their individuality, and to feel in control of the pace of the relationship. Creating this balance requires a delicate touch. Allow them the freedom to express their desires and thoughts, validating their perspective without imposing your own. This balance between intimacy and autonomy creates a relationship where they feel cherished but not confined, free yet connected. It's a bond where trust flourishes, making them feel more deeply rooted in the relationship as they recognize the respect you afford them. A bond forged in trust. Rapport and trust are not merely strategies. They're the heartbeat of any meaningful connection. When someone trusts you, they feel a magnetic pull, a longing to remain close, because the bond feels genuine, something they cherish and protect. This trust becomes the foundation upon which influence builds, creating a connection that feels less like manipulation and more like destiny. By mastering rapport and trust, you become a safe harbor for their emotions, a place where they feel understood and valued. This connection transcends the superficial, binding them to you in ways that feel profound and enduring. In the next chapter, we'll explore the art of subtle influence, diving deeper into the nuances of guiding thoughts and emotions without overt control. Here, we'll learn how to harness the power of suggestion and gentle persuasion, shaping desires and intentions with a touch so light, it feels as though they've arrived at their own conclusions. Chapter 5. The Art of Subtle Influence Influence isn't always about grand gestures or direct confrontation. The most potent influence is often silent, so subtle that the other person may never recognize its presence even as it guides their thoughts, emotions, and decisions. This kind of influence doesn't rely on force or persuasion. It thrives in the quiet spaces of suggestion, in the delicate art of planting ideas that seem to blossom naturally within the other person's mind. This chapter delves into the elusive yet powerful realm of subtle influence, 
where words are whispers, gestures are gentle nudges, and presence itself becomes a guiding force. Here, the puppet master learns to speak not to the mind alone, but to the heart, weaving influence in ways that resonate on a deeper, more emotional level. The power of suggestion. One of the most powerful tools in subtle influence is suggestion. When an idea is suggested rather than stated outright, it bypasses resistance and allows the other person to feel as though they have arrived at the thought on their own. Suggestion is like a seed planted quietly within the subconscious, which takes root and grows, shaping beliefs, desires, and motivations without overt interference. For example, rather than instructing someone to pursue a goal, you might say, I wonder what it would be like if you followed your passion. This gentle phrase isn't a directive, but an invitation, allowing their mind to explore the idea independently. The beauty of suggestion lies in its open-ended nature. Instead of telling them what to think, you offer a framework for thought, gently nudging them toward conclusions that feel natural and self-motivated. A well-placed suggestion has the power to reshape decisions and influence behaviors. It doesn't feel like manipulation. Instead, it feels like a gentle exploration, a whisper that lingers in the back of their mind slowly drawing them closer to the path you envision. Choosing words that resonate. Words carry weight, but the choice of words can either inspire resistance or invite acceptance. The art of subtle influence requires a mastery of language, selecting words that resonate with emotions rather than logic alone. Words that evoke feelings are more likely to bypass rational defenses and reach the core of a person's desires and fears. Consider the difference between you need to trust me and I'd love for you to feel safe with me. The former feels like a demand, creating a potential barrier. The latter feels like an invitation, creating a space where trust can grow organically. By choosing words that evoke warmth, curiosity, or a sense of possibility, you speak directly to the heart, fostering a sense of comfort and connection that makes influence feel as gentle as a breeze. This choice of words is especially powerful when addressing deeper emotions, such as insecurities or dreams. Phrasing things in a way that acknowledges their feelings while offering reassurance creates an emotional resonance, making them more receptive to the influence embedded within your words. The dance of silence and space. Influence doesn't always require words. Sometimes, the most profound moments of influence occur in silence. Silence, when used thoughtfully, creates space for the other person to reflect, to consider, and to feel a presence without pressure. In these quiet moments, thoughts surface organically, unencumbered by external expectations. Silence provides a sanctuary for introspection, where the other person feels free to explore their emotions without interference. In these silences, your role is simply to be present, to offer a calm, attentive energy that speaks louder than words. This presence becomes a subtle influence in itself, creating an environment where they feel valued and understood. Silence allows them to hear their own thoughts, but it also allows your energy to permeate the interaction, shaping the atmosphere in ways that words alone cannot. Creating space in conversations, moments where you allow them to pause, reflect, or express themselves, fosters a sense of respect and autonomy. This subtle dance of silence and space conveys a quiet influence that feels less like guidance and more like partnership, making them feel not only heard but empowered. Nonverbal cues, speaking through presence. Our bodies speak a language all their own. Nonverbal cues, such as a warm smile, steady eye contact, or a slight nod, can be just as influential as words, often communicating reassurance, interest, or empathy. By mastering nonverbal cues, you can subtly guide emotions, offering comfort and connection without a single word. When someone shares something vulnerable, maintaining gentle eye contact conveys acceptance, a quiet signal that you are fully present. 
A slight lean forward during a conversation shows engagement, inviting them to open up further. Even subtle gestures like mirroring their posture or movements can create a sense of harmony, fostering an unspoken connection that makes influence feel like a natural extension of shared understanding. The key to nonverbal influence is authenticity. Forced gestures can feel manipulative, but when done with genuine empathy, these cues become powerful connectors, creating an atmosphere of trust and acceptance. Through presence alone, you can influence emotions, creating an environment where they feel valued and understood, deepening the bond without ever resorting to overt manipulation. Crafting moments of reflection. Moments of reflection are like mirrors, allowing the other person to see themselves more clearly, often in ways they hadn't before. These moments are an invitation to pause and consider, creating a subtle influence that encourages introspection. A simple question, have you ever noticed how much joy that brings you? Can spark a moment of realization, guiding them to explore their feelings and motivations in a new light. The beauty of reflection lies in its subtlety. By guiding their attention to certain thoughts or emotions, you create a space where self-discovery can flourish, often leading them to insights that align with your intended influence. This kind of influence is delicate, respecting their autonomy while gently shaping their understanding of themselves. In this way, reflection becomes a powerful tool, encouraging personal growth and emotional clarity that strengthens your connection. Creating moments of reflection doesn't require complex dialogue. Sometimes, a single well-placed question or observation is enough. The goal is not to steer them in a specific direction, but to provide a lens through which they can explore their own path, subtly guided by your presence. Pacing and leading, the rhythm of influence. Pacing and leading is a subtle technique that involves aligning with the other person's current state, whether emotional, mental, or physical and then gradually guiding them towards a different state. This technique is particularly effective because it respects where they are building rapport through empathy before attempting to influence them. To pace, you might match their tone, energy level, or emotional intensity, creating a sense of resonance. Once rapport is established, you begin to lead, shifting your energy or tone to gently guide them towards the desired state. If they are feeling anxious, you might start by mirroring their urgency, then slowly transition to a calmer demeanor, encouraging them to follow suit. This shift feels natural, as though they are simply responding to the changing energy in the room, unaware of the influence that led them there. Pacing and leading is a dance of alignment and subtle direction, an invitation for them to move in harmony with your intended influence. By honoring their initial state, you create a foundation of trust, making the transition feel effortless and authentic, as if they are simply attuning to a rhythm that resonates with their own, leaving them with a thought. The final touch and subtle influence is often the simplest, leaving them with a lingering thought, an idea that takes root and grows in the quiet moments after the conversation has ended. This thought should be gentle, an invitation rather than a directive, allowing them the space to explore it on their own. An example might be, I wonder how things might shift if you looked at it from a different angle. This seed of curiosity, once planted, becomes a quiet companion, something they return to in moments of reflection, subtly guiding their thoughts and decisions. Its influence in its softest form, no pressure, no control, just a gentle nudge that resonates in the background shaping their perspective over time. By leaving them with a thought, you allow them to carry your influence with them, subtly woven into their own reflections and realizations. This approach respects their autonomy, creating an influence that feels both meaningful and unobtrusive, a quiet force that lingers long after the conversation has ended. Subtle influence, when mastered, feels less like persuasion and more like companionship, a shared journey where guidance feels like gentle encouragement rather than control. Through suggestion, presence, 
and the power of nonverbal cues, you create an influence that resonates on an emotional level, deepening connections and fostering a trust that feels both authentic and enduring. Chapter 6. The Subtle Art of Manipulation Manipulation, a word that stirs discomfort, perhaps even suspicion, lives in the shadows of human interaction. Often dismissed as inherently deceitful, manipulation is a complex dance of influence that exists at the very core of social connection. It goes beyond stereotypes, extending its reach into countless nuances of human behavior and intention. To understand the subtle art of manipulation is to peel back layers of human nature, examining not only what it is but why it arises and what it says about the world we live in. The nature of manipulation. At its essence, manipulation can be seen as an art of influence, something deeply woven into the fabric of social life. Humans are naturally social creatures, and within every interaction lies a web of verbal and nonverbal cues, emotional subtext, and underlying intentions. Here, manipulation may emerge, not always in malevolent disguise, but as a way to navigate relationships, to communicate needs, and to impact outcomes. This influence can manifest in many forms, from persuasion and emotional appeal to more coercive tactics, and occasionally, even well-meaning guidance. Take the workplace, for example, an environment ripe with complex social dynamics and subtle influence. A project leader might craft their pitch to appeal to their team's desire for success, highlighting the benefits while glossing over potential risks. In doing so, they sway opinions and build momentum without necessarily deceiving anyone. This manipulation operates in a gray space where the line between ethical and exploitative influence is often blurred, underscoring that not all manipulation is inherently harmful. Motivations behind manipulation. The motivations fueling manipulation are as varied as they are complex. For some, manipulation is a tool for personal gain, a method to climb higher, secure favor, or wield power. Others, however, may be driven by motivations that are less self-serving. A family member, for instance, might convince a loved one to seek therapy, believing that while it might feel invasive initially, it is in their best interest. Here, manipulation arises from care rather than control, from love rather than malice. Insecurity, too, often lurks behind manipulative actions. When faced with chaos or uncertainty, some may feel an intense need to control their environment, and manipulation becomes a means to impose order in a world that feels unpredictable. It's a way to find stability in situations that seem overwhelming. Though the action may be manipulative, the intent is driven by a desire for safety, for calm amidst the storm. Ethical implications. The ethics of manipulation are as murky as the motives behind it. In an ideal world, influence would respect boundaries honor autonomy, and uphold consent. Yet, reality is rarely this clear-cut. The line between influence and manipulation often forces us to question the balance between persuasive power and individual freedom. When one person's actions benefit them but infringe upon another's autonomy, manipulation crosses into an ethically dubious territory. Consider marketing and politics arenas where manipulation is wielded on a grand scale. Compelling advertisements and campaign strategies are engineered to influence, often blurring the line between honest persuasion and exploitative tactics. In today's digital age, where information can be molded and spread in seconds, the ethical landscape becomes increasingly complex. Manipulation has the potential to affect not only individual choices, but also societal beliefs, pushing us to grapple with the weight of influence on a collective level. Broader societal implications. To understand manipulation is to acknowledge its power to shape society at large. We live in a world that champions self-promotion, where influence often equates to success, and manipulation becomes a subtle force guiding behavior and belief. Social media, perhaps the most visible stage for modern manipulation, 
is a landscape where authenticity and artistry and influence are constantly at odds. Here, influencers carefully curate content that resonates emotionally, sometimes playing on insecurities to sell a product, an ideal, or a dream. This isn't mere persuasion. It's an orchestrated manipulation of perception, often blurring the line between reality and carefully constructed facades. In politics, manipulation has long been a tool for winning hearts and votes. Politicians shape narratives, craft messages, and build personas designed to appeal to specific demographics, leveraging fears, hopes, and identities. These tactics don't just win elections. They shape the trajectory of society, affecting policies and influencing public sentiment in ways that can have profound, lasting effects. The subtle art of manipulation lies at the heart of human interaction. Though it raises ethical dilemmas and societal concerns, it also underscores the depth of human communication and the powerful undercurrents that shape our connections with others. To recognize manipulation, whether as a giver or a receiver, is to understand the forces that influence us daily, allowing us to make more conscious choices and approach our interactions with clarity and intention that be why engaging with manipulation ethically. We can strive for a balance between influence and integrity, shaping relationships and societies that prioritize mutual respect, autonomy, and genuine connection. This isn't about removing manipulation from our lives, but about wielding its power with awareness so that we can create environments where influence uplifts rather than diminishes, where connection strengthens rather than severs. In embracing this art responsibly, we discover not only our own capacity for influence, but also our profound responsibility in how we choose to wield it. Chapter 7. Using Body Language and Presence In today's world, where connections can often feel fleeting and surface level, the art of genuine communication has never been more essential. Amid the buzz of notifications and the clamor of conversations, it's easy to forget that true understanding doesn't come solely from words. It's in the subtle, unspoken cues, the movements, the posture, the gaze, and the energy we bring, that connection finds its deepest roots. Body language and presence form the silent foundation of every interaction lending a depth and clarity that spoken words alone can't capture. They're the hidden language, the unspoken conversation that binds us in ways that transcend speech. The importance of body language. Body language, our wordless language, reveals truths in ways we might not even consciously understand. It encompasses every subtle message our body sends. From the arch of an eyebrow to the sway of our stance, to the way we navigate the physical space around us. Studies tell us that a staggering 93% of what we communicate happens through these nonverbal channels. This understanding liberates us. It reminds us that expression and connection run deeper than our words, giving us both the freedom to be more authentic and the power to read the emotions and intentions of those around us. Consider the immense power of a simple smile. In that small expression, a thousand words can live, a message of warmth, openness, and connection. A genuine smile can break down barriers in an instant, creating a bridge between two people and inviting understanding. In contrast, crossed arms can signal defensiveness or discomfort, silently building an invisible wall that can distance us from each other. When we become mindful of these signals, we gain a profound tool for forging meaningful connections. We begin to see past what's said, reaching into the emotions that lie just beneath the surface. Gestures are another powerful form of silent communication, a language we all speak, yet often overlook. The sweep of a hand, a nod, or even a subtle shift of the shoulders can lend intensity and vibrancy to our words. Imagine a speaker whose hands move in sync with their passion, amplifying each thought and emotion they're sharing. The audience can feel it. Each gesture resonates, pulling them into the speaker's world. Yet, gestures carry a delicate complexity, 
They're bound to cultural interpretations that vary widely. A sign of agreement in one culture might be misunderstood or even offensive in another. This reminds us of the need for sensitivity, of respecting the diversity of those we communicate with, and of being mindful of how we express ourselves in different spaces. Posture, too, is a quiet yet powerful communicator. The way we hold ourselves shapes not only how we feel, but also how we're perceived. A person who stands tall with an open stance exudes confidence and approachability, an unspoken invitation to connect. In contrast, slouching, looking away, or turning one's body away can convey disinterest or insecurity, casting shadows over our intentions. In professional settings, a strong posture can command respect, helping others to see us as reliable and authoritative. In social situations, a warm, open posture can make others feel welcomed and valued. Even the space we choose to keep, the distance or closeness we allow, can influence the comfort, trust, and warmth shared in that moment. These choices make an impression that lingers, affecting how others remember us long after the conversation has ended. The power of presence. While body language speaks in gestures and expressions, Presence is more than what we do. It's the feeling we bring to the space we occupy. Presence is about energy, the intangible force that fills a room and draws people in, creating an atmosphere of authenticity and connection. It's that magnetic quality, the ability to captivate others simply by being fully yourself. Developing presence starts with self-awareness. Truly knowing who we are, embracing our strengths, and being vulnerable enough to accept our imperfections. This journey of self-discovery allows us to connect with others in a way that feels real, natural, and impactful. Mindfulness plays a critical role in cultivating this presence. When we're mindful, we're fully anchored in the present moment, undistracted by what came before or what's to come. In this state, we engage in active listening, the foundation of truly meaningful communication. Active listening goes beyond hearing words. It means being attuned to the speaker's energy, emotions, and intentions, acknowledging them with empathy and understanding. This level of engagement enables us to connect deeply, showing others that we genuinely care, that we're there with them in that shared space. In a world where people often feel unheard and unseen, this active presence is a rare and powerful gift. A strong presence resonates most deeply when our body language aligns harmoniously with our words. Imagine someone passionately sharing an idea, yet holding closed-off body language. Their words may be persuasive, but the lack of openness creates doubt, causing listeners to pull back. On the other hand, when a speaker's words are backed by open body language, maintaining warm eye contact, using gestures that resonate with the message, and holding a confident posture. Their message gains credibility and trust. This alignment is like a symphony. Every part works in harmony, amplifying the impact and drawing others into an experience that feels genuine and memorable. Mastering the art of body language and presence isn't just about understanding others. It's about creating a space where everyone feels valued, seen, and connected. By becoming attuned to our nonverbal cues and nurturing the strength of our presence, we elevate every interaction, deepening our relationships and conveying our messages with conviction and sincerity. In an era where digital communication often overshadows face-to-face -face connection, we can't afford to lose touch with the power of presence. Body language and presence aren't just personal strengths. They're vital in professional and social environments, where they foster understanding, empathy, and collaboration. In a world hungry for connection, these tools are more than skills. They're bridges uniting people in meaningful ways. They transform ordinary conversations into moments of authenticity and understanding, giving us all the chance to communicate in a way that's heartfelt, purposeful, and true. Chapter 8. Ethics and Boundaries in Dark Seduction 
Dark seduction is a tantalizing yet perilous realm, a shadow dance where allure and danger intertwine, casting light on the complex fabric of human relationships. It's an invitation to step into a world that promises passion and connection. Yet beneath its seductive pull lies an intricate maze fraught with ethical challenges and emotional risks. To explore dark seduction is to acknowledge the profound importance of boundaries, consent, and an unwavering respect for the humanity of others. A reminder that even the most passionate connections demand compassion and care. Understanding Dark Seduction Dark seduction exists within a gray zone of attraction, blurring the lines between genuine desire and coercive manipulation. It draws on deep psychological insights, leveraging triggers and vulnerabilities, weaving an influence so subtle that it often slips beneath conscious awareness. While traditional seduction is rooted in mutual respect and shared desire, dark seduction preys upon imbalance where one party can exert control over the other, sowing seeds of dependency, confusion, and even imposter syndrome. This imbalance transforms what could be a beautiful exchange into something unsettling, a game where one's heart may become a pawn. The thrill that dark seduction evokes is both enticing and disorienting, often leaving people questioning their own emotions and motivations. The shadows of self-doubt creep in, chipping away at trust, the vital foundation of any meaningful relationship. The very elements that make dark seduction so alluring also bring forth the risk of harm, eroding the line between connection and manipulation. The ethical implications. The ethics of dark seduction run deep. At its core lies consent, the sacred foundation of any intimate encounter. Yet. In a dynamic tainted by power imbalance, consent can become a fragile, ambiguous concept. Imagine a scenario where a person in a position of authority, perhaps a mentor or employer, engages in seductive tactics with someone under their influence. Or consider a vulnerable person searching for emotional refuge, ensnared by dark seduction. In these situations, the ability to genuinely consent is at risk of being overshadowed by pressure or dependence. For those who engage in seductive practices, there is a responsibility to confront the ethical weight of their actions. While the allure of dark seduction can create a mirage of closeness, this connection often comes at a high emotional cost. Manipulating another's vulnerabilities leaves behind invisible scars that may only be recognized long after the moment has passed. These marks can linger as anxiety, fear of intimacy, and a deep-seated sense of self-doubt. The emotional repercussions are lasting, and those impacted may carry a wounded heart long after the initial spark has faded. Boundaries, a pillar of ethical interaction. Boundaries are the bedrock of ethical interaction, especially in the sphere of dark seduction, where intentions can become clouded and emotions intense. Boundaries honor autonomy, safeguarding both individuals in an exchange from exploitation and emotional harm. This requires self-awareness and a commitment to respecting the emotional limits of those we engage with, knowing when to lean in and when to gracefully step back. Establishing boundaries isn't about stifling passion. It's about creating a safe space where attraction can flourish without fear or regret. At the heart of healthy boundaries lies open communication, a bridge that connects two people with honesty, allowing each to voice their desires and limits. Vulnerability finds a safe haven within this space, where both parties can express their comfort levels and be met with understanding. Recognizing the fine line between playful flirtation and crossing in a territory that feels manipulative is crucial. In a realm as nuanced as dark seduction, this sensitivity to the emotional well-being of others becomes an ethical compass, preventing the relationship from devolving into a space of manipulation and emotional harm. The Role of Power Dynamics Power dynamics are inextricable from the ethical landscape of dark seduction. Often, the allure of dark seduction is rooted in disparity, 
a perceived difference in power, authority, or experience. Whether it's charisma, intelligence, or social influence, this imbalance creates an environment where one person may feel compelled to yield, even at the cost of their own needs and desires. To navigate these dynamics responsibly, a keen awareness of one's role and influence is essential. Acknowledging the power we hold in any interaction and being mindful of the vulnerability of others is a powerful first step. When seduction is approached with transparency, self-awareness, and honesty, it opens a door to relationships where both individuals feel respected, seen, and understood. But when these elements are absent, power imbalances can easily slip into the dangerous territory of exploitation, diminishing the value of consent and autonomy. Embracing ethical seduction. Dark seduction is a concept often romanticized in literature and film, a seductive mystery that captivates audiences and fascinates our minds. But the true allure of attraction lies not in veiled manipulation, but in the transparency of genuine connection. Ethical seduction encourages us to value the person before us, to respect their boundaries, honor their autonomy, and foster mutual trust. Only then can we enjoy the beauty of attraction without endangering the emotional safety of those we connect with. Acknowledging the ethical dimensions of dark seduction enriches our relationships, inviting us into a world of deeper, more respectful connections. Boundaries and self-awareness become guiding lights, allowing us to navigate the intricate landscape of attraction with both passion and integrity. As we traverse this territory, let us remember that the truest connections are born from mutual respect and empathy. By holding space for consent, boundaries, and open communication, we honor not just the allure of seduction, but the dignity and autonomy of those we touch. In doing so, we weave a story that celebrates the beauty of attraction while safeguarding the profound essence of human connection. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.